When rape results in pregnancy, or when giving birth might cost the mother's life, few women would fail to consider as an alternative abortion. But let's say you're a doctor, a physician not morally adverse to terminating a patient's pregnancy, and the circumstances are neither frivolous nor dire. Let's say that on a given day, you are consulted by two young women, both pregnant, both doubtful as to whether they should be. Now remember, such a choice is ultimately the mother's, but because you are a physician, and because your judgment is respected, and because your patient is seeking guidance, everything you say, regardless of how clinically objective, yes, even the tone of your voice, may sway her decision. Yours is a position of enormous responsibility. Like it or not, the very expression on your face could save or extinguish a life. Your first expectant mother is Katerina. Katerina is unmarried, obviously in her teens, obviously poor. You ask her age and she tells you, and at once you realize she has overstated her years by one or two or three. Katerina is in the first trimester of her pregnancy. You ask if she's been pregnant before. Katerina shakes her head. Studying her, you wonder. You inquire of her general health. No problems, she says and the health of the father. Katerina shrugs. Her eyes fall. She has lost contact with the father of her unborn child. All she knows is he was 23, a lawyer or a notary or something like that. He lives nearby, she thinks. She's not so sure. The affair was over quickly, little more than a one-night stand. No child was expected, nor now is it wanted. What? doctor, is your advice. Later that same day, you are consulted by a second expectant mother. Her name is Clara. Clara is 28, married three years, the wife of a government worker. She has the look of a woman accustomed to anguish. Concerned for the ultimate health of her unborn, Clara explains that for each year of her marriage, she's had a child, and each has died. The first within 31 months the second within 16 months, the third within several days. Disease, you ask? Clara nods. She suspects that any future child would be equally susceptible. For you see, her husband is also her second cousin. Both Catholic, they received papal dispensation to marry, though now Clara questions their wisdom in asking permission. And there's something else. One of Clara's sisters is a hunchback, Another sister, the mother of a hunchback. Clara is in the first trimester of her fourth pregnancy. The odds are against the health of her child. Time is running out, and it is only later that you learn Clara's husband is not, as she said, her second cousin. He is her uncle. So what, doctor, is your advice? In addition to all immediate considerations, physical, moral, religious, the dilemma of whether to terminate a pregnancy is a philosophical question. Might this life, if left to live, affect the consciousness or even the destiny of mankind? Yet, if the profoundity of this question is diminished by the balance which governs all life, there is evidence in the two true stories you have just heard. The unwed mother with unwanted child. The married mother with the graves of three infants behind her. For if you, as the hypothetical physician, have opted in both cases for abortion, then you have respectfully denied the world the multifaceted genius of Leonardo da Vinci and spared humanity the terror of Adolf Hitler. <laughs>